Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jerome Bailey, and I'm with the ESRD National Coordinating Center. Thank you for joining us today for the ESRD NCC Patient Education Webinar Event. The ESRD NCC webinar events are held in partnership with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. The calls feature patient and professional subject matter experts from around the country sharing how they or their organization are coping with situations related to COVID-19. Before we get started, I want to let you know this call is being recorded and will be posted to the NCC COVID webpage, usually within three business days. Many times we will have the recording up on the webpage well before three business days. Let's take a look at the agenda for today's call. Today we are happy to have Nurse Kimberly Davis of the Robinson Institute, Raymond Scott, a home hemodialysis patient, and Renita Peck, a peritoneal dialysis patient from ESRD Network 9. Our topic for today's call is home dialysis during COVID-19 lessons learned. What is this call about? So, we'll share best practice examples of getting patients to move to a home therapy. We'll hear patient experiences of using a home therapy during the COVID-19 pandemic. And we'll also hear the professional and patient perspective on the benefits of a home therapy. Before we start with our presentation, we, have, we wanted to share a new resource with you. Uh, the ESRD NCC recently created a tool to help get kidney patients and their families through the holiday season joyfully and healthy. A season for safety, celebrating the holidays in 2020 was created by patient subject matter experts with the ESRD NCC. The resource also offers information on COVID-19 and the flu. It's available in English and Spanish. Let's begin our presentation. Our panelists, as our panelists go through their presentation and you have questions, please submit them using the chat feature through WebEx or the Q&A on the lower right of your screen. When we get to the question and answer section of this presentation, we will share the questions we have received with our speakers. Our goal is to answer as many questions as time allows. Let's learn a little more about our first speaker. Ms. Kimberly Davis is the Director of Home Therapies for Rogerson Institute, overseeing the largest independent home dialysis program in New York, as well as one of the top 10 ranked programs in the United States. Ms. Davis has had firsthand experience with the first wave of COVID-19 and with strong partnerships, developed innovative protocols to protect and prevent contraction of the virus in Rogerson's dialysis population. Kimberly, thank you for joining us. Thanks so much for having me on today. I really um, am appreciative of the NCC and the ability to share this information today. Next slide, please. So some of the objectives that I'd like to cover today is looking at some of the risk data from the first COVID-19 experience. I'd like to share some experiences in reducing the risks for new home dialysis patients, discuss some best practices developed during COVID-19 pandemic, and review present recommendations and resources related to COVID-19. Next slide, please. So what was the state of access to home dialysis prior to the pandemic? In Network 2, where I reside, in 2019, 325 facilities, only 443 offered home dialysis, peritoneal, and or home hemodialysis. There were 44,580 total prevalent patients or existing patients on dialysis, and only 2,350 were on home dialysis. Of 8,007 incident patients, meaning that they were new to dialysis, 642 were on home hemodialysis. In 2019, only 3.3% of the total patients were on home dialysis. So what I would really like to know is, were you educated on home options? Next slide. These were some of the compounding risks and challenges that we faced. 
Obviously, I work in New York City, so providing dialysis in urban areas had an additional exposure risk for patients. People were on public transportation to go to medical appointments. There was community exposure in performing everyday needs, like grocery shopping, going to pick up your medications, access to testing. Early on, patients weren't able to get tested readily. And also, patients in the home environment and the number of people who were actually living in their home. Next slide, please. So round one, batter up. At Rogerson, this was a collaborative team effort and an agreement to take on a challenge and be innovative. The team adopted home is best, home is first, everyone is yes until there's a no, and our primary goal was we thought that home dialysis would be a way to minimize exposure. Next slide. Patient successes. Out of our patients, less than 5% contracted COVID-19. We have over 220 patients in our home program and across uh, New York City. Fewer than 10 patients had a poor outcome with the highest number between February and March of 2020. We had an increase in patients choosing home hemodialysis treatment by 35%, and it increased patient satisfaction through the expansion of telehealth, which I'm going to go through. And patients told us that it actually decreased their anxiety and fear of going out in the community and or to a community dialysis center. Next slide. The expansion and use of telehealth. We saw this as an opportunity to increase the use of telehealth and it demonstrated the following opportunity. We had more access to people to provide information sessions and education in the comfort of your home without having another appointment to attend and without leaving your home. Free training. Patients who were waiting for training were not quite ready. We were able to do virtual education in order to get you ready for training. We did wellness checks and clinic visits. We realized during this time that people being home during COVID-19 was enormously isolating, and we wanted to have frequent contact with patients as their rate of depression and or not able to do their usual activities had an impact on their normal daily life. Preliminary home visits, we used virtual technology to take a look around the home before we actually send someone out to assess someone for home dialysis. Preliminary, I'm sorry, confirming and teaching self-administration of medications. Um, this was one thing where patients may have been instructed on how to perform self-administration of their own medication. However, when we had you on virtual, you could actually do it in front of us. So it increased patient confidence enormously by allowing them to be able to perform uh, self-administration of medication. We also did patient empowerment events where we invited groups of patients to talk about their experiences or wanting more information on home dialysis. And um, this led to many people having access to the information that they needed. Next slide, please. Further patient risk mitigation. This was how to lower further exposure or possibility of exposure. What we did was with patients in high-risk categories that were sh we sheltered in place with nurses deployed to the home for blood draws and other needs. Resources were found in apartment buildings to assist in supply deliveries. Many people on home dialysis that used to get in-home deliveries now had to face the challenge of their supplies being dropped off in their lobby of their apartment building or left outside their door. And um, during COVID, since many people were not working, we were able to hang up posters and look for other resources in their apartment buildings to actually get groups of people within the same building to assist someone in moving their supplies inside of their apartment. We found community resources to assist with food deliveries. We used telehealth to decrease the frequency of clinic appointments. We had patients that you would require one visit and your next two were virtual. Home deliveries of medications and supplies were done in place of the patient coming to the unit. Next slide, please. So what was our focus during round two? 
Are patients following the recommendations? There were many, many news stories and many conflicting ideas of should I wear a mask, should I not wear a mask, what should I do? How do you feel about receiving the vaccine? Now that the COVID vaccine has been deployed and soon to be distributed through the population, how do you feel about that? Do you feel that like they're ready to take the vaccination? Are you missing your other vaccinations, such as flu and pneumonia? And are you completing your transplant workup? But as of today, have you gotten your flu shot? Next slide. So this was some information I found that was pretty interesting about best face coverings and or mask recommendations for people outside of the healthcare setting, given that the weather is getting colder and that uh, winter time is coming. But on the slides, as you can see, a scarf or a bandana is only 44% to 49% effective, and it should only be used if you have nothing else. There are other recommendations such as a tea towel or a dishcloth, cotton t-shirt, two-layer uh, cotton mask. So you don't always have to find or utilize a surgical mask in order to protect yourself in the environment if you cannot have access to it. However, I found this slide very helpful for people who find a surgical mask to be very expensive when you're going out to buy them in your in your local area, and other things that you can do at home that are washable and more eco-friendly. Next slide, please. So there's many resources and hotlines available to provide more information. In my slide, I've provided the link for Network 2. Many of your networks have lots of resources regarding COVID to ask questions and or get information. The American Association of Kidney Patients, AAKP as it's known, which is another great resource for patients regarding education policy updates. And actually, this link actually contains vaccine updates for COVID-19. And also in the local area, a patient advocate group who's very near and dear to my heart, New York CKD Champions, which is found on Facebook. These are three great links to get you started. Next slide. Though my presentation was short, I hope that the information provided gives you more insight and hopefully you ask more questions regarding your interest in home dialysis, also vaccinations, and again, our experience with COVID-19. My email is provided on the slide should you have any additional questions after my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. Lots of great information. And as I'm sure our audience has lots of questions for you. Uh, but before we get to their questions, we want to hear from a couple of our uh, patient presenters. Uh, first, we have Raymond Scott. Mr. Scott is the co-founder of One in Nine Charities, uh, Inc. He's co-author of One in Nine Tribe, a dedicated husband and father, and a kidney disease warrior and advocate. In 2016, Raymond was a celebrity star dancer with the National Kidney Foundation of Arizona's Dancing with the Stars. Raymond continues to divide the odds. And in 2020, the One in Nine documentary, A Dance with Destiny, was completed to bring greater awareness to kidney disease. As a home hemodialysis patient for eight years, Raymond enjoys sharing his kidney journey with others. His passion centers around bringing awareness to kidney disease. We also have Renita Peck. Uh, she serves as a subject matter expert with the ESRD Network 9 and the ESRD NCC NPSC LAN. She was involved in the development of several of the ESRD NCC patient resources. Mrs. Peck is currently on peritoneal dialysis. She was diagnosed with kidney disease in 1999. She started in center hemodialysis in 2016, but eventually started treating at home. She works full time as a recruiter for a hospital in Indianapolis and enjoys shopping, spending time with friends, and community service with her sorority. Renita is married and finds delight in 
spoiling her nieces. So welcome, Renita and Raymond. So um, I'm going to start throwing out a couple of questions for you both. Uh, let's uh, start with Raymond. When you uh, when you were first diagnosed with kidney failure, um, why did you choose a home dialysis ther therapy? So when were you first di uh, diagnosed with kidney failure, and uh, why did you choose a home therapy? Well, I actually, uh, being on dialysis now, uh, come February 18th will be 23 years. Um, I've done all the modalities, but the first uh, modality that I chose outside of the hospital and hemodialysis in the hospital was um, peritoneal dialysis, and which worked for me really well for about three and a half years, if that long. And um, it was the reason why I chose uh, peritoneal dialysis was because the flexibility in the diet. Uh, the first time I went in to have blood work done, they told me, Mr. Scott, you need to drink more water. Uh, you can eat bananas, you can eat tomatoes, and that was pure delight for me. But it was mostly because of that. But I didn't really look at the side effects or, or the positive side of it, which would be better fluid control, um, limited amount of time in the hospital until the end. And uh, Renita, the same question for you. Um, when were you first diagnosed with kidney failure and why did you choose a home therapy? Well, um, like you mentioned, I was um, diagnosed in 1999 and um, did not have to start dialysis in 2016, so I my kidney functions were relatively stable um, until that time. Um, but um, due to my, you know, living situation uh, where my husband and I lived, it was not real feasible for me to do home dialysis. I did want to start, um, and I was um, educated on all of the modalities prior to starting um, dialysis, However, like I said, the living situation that I was in was just not um, feasible. So I did start in center, and then when we moved, I was able to move into the home um, dialysis uh, because it offered me, like he, he mentioned, uh, better flexibility. Um, I love bananas and tomatoes and potatoes as well. <laughs> and... <laughs> um, and uh, so that, uh, and like I said, the flexibility, I work full time, so I'm able to do it overnight. Um, I'm able to travel, you know, go for the weekend. I get my supplies, load them up in the car if I'm driving or have them shipped if I'm, you know, flying. Um, just, you know, it's just an easier um, modality uh, for my lifestyle. Um, Renita, sticking with you, what, did you have any concerns about going to a home therapy? And um, how did you uh, address those concerns, if any? Well, um, I, I guess I, 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 the only concern that I had was, um, you know, impact on um, my husband and uh, him because when you go to dialysis, you go away, you know, you go away from the home, you get it done, you come back. He doesn't see what I have to go through. Um, and him seeing, you know, what I go through, I was a little concerned about that, but he, you know, he handles being a caregiver like a champ. He gets my supplies. He knows kind of what, what I need every evening, so he'll go grab, you know, grab my supplies for me and things of that nature and um but um that I think that was the concern as well as um space space for supplies um that um I mean we worked it out but you know that was like oh gosh you know this is the 
this is a lot of supplies. <laughs> so. Okay. Um, and uh, Raymond, the same question for you. What concerns did you have about going to uh, home therapy? Well, first of all, let me let me let me tell you this. I've been doing uh, home hemodialysis for the past eight years. Um, the the concern that I had was. Um, the difficulty of it, especially after being in center for so long and seeing what they go through there. Um, but I heard all the positives of how I could be more energized. I could maybe drop off a few meds, uh, be more structured in the flexibility of being home, just like she said, um, was what I was looking for. Uh, the, the turning point for me was one, one time my son came to the hospital to see me, and I had all kind of IVs and everything in my arms and dragging around a oxygen machine, and it was very scary for him for at a two year as a two year old, and we really started to search right then. I needed something else that would be beneficial not only to myself but my family and the flexibility of it so that I could be more healthy, so at, which I am now. And even when I meet dialysis patients, they don't believe I'm a dialysis patient until I show them my uh, my arm. But that's what I did. Hmm. And Raymond, how has uh, COVID-19 changed your life over the past, let's say, uh, 10 months? Oh, my goodness. First of all, it would be my kids being at home and the attention I would have to give them. So that speaks for itself. But secondly, it was um, just going from being uh, fearful of what was out there and what was lurking. Uh, so I went from being fearful to being careful. So what happened in the beginning, I wouldn't even go outside, out in the house, except for um, – walking around the neighborhood, but stores were off limits and all of that. But now with the washing of the hands, the hand sanitizer, the precautions I take, I go to the store now, but mostly when the earlier hours or the late hours when it's not as full. Um, but COVID has changed my family in general. Um, even doing telehealth meetings, with my doctor. I mean, to have your doctor, your nurse, social worker, nutritionist all on the same line at the same time was quite different for me. I'm used to the hands-on type approach, but it, of course I understood that it was beneficial. But now we're getting into a groove, even though the numbers are increasing here, we're getting into the groove, we're watching you know, who we have over and how many people we have over. Even Thanksgiving was different for us because we usually have like 30 people over. I'm cooking two turkeys, a ham, mad pies, and cakes. And all of that changed to just the people that live in this house. And we had people over who would get a plate and leave, and that was it. But they were, of course, wearing masks. Uh, what you know, and in, in dealing and dealing with all of that, uh, what do you see as some of the benefits of being able to do your treatment at home? Oh, the the greatest benefit is kind of I wouldn't say being isolated, but just being away from the the dialysis unit. Now you have so many people there who are basically struggling to stay alive. And now you enter COVID into that, and you don't know where they've been or what they've been doing, and they bring that into the dialysis unit. That was one of the things I was grateful that I am doing home hemodialysis instead of going in unit, because I cannot picture with the, especially the spread that's been going on, being in a unit. But being at home, you have that security and that safety of knowing where the people have been 
and what they've been doing. Thank you, Raymond. Uh, Renita, I'm going to um, ask you the same question. How has COVID uh, changed your life over the, over the last 10 months? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, just like Raymond said, just ditto, pretty much. Um, he he um, nailed it when he said he went from being fearful to careful, and that is exactly um, – the same way um, I've operated, going from not not going anywhere, my you know my husband doing all the the grocery shopping and anything we needed done, he would go out and do, to now you know going to a grocery store. Um, I'm not a real morning person, so I can't get to those early hours. But, um, <laughs> you know, just being careful and mindful of, you know, sanitizing and, um, you know, making sure as soon as I leave the store, I'm, as I'm walking to my car, I'm sanitizing so I don't touch my car handle and, you know, and, and that type of thing. And I'm wiping off the car handle and the steering wheel and, you know, and things of that nature. So just trying to, and buying every uh, can of Lysol I come across. But, <laughs> but um, that's, you know, pretty much it, it, how it's changed. And um, can you talk about some of the benefits that you uh, see being able to do your treatment at home? Oh, um, there's been a definite benefit um, during this time. Um, you know, um, as you mentioned before, I work in healthcare, so I, I, you know, I know what the risks are. And the more you're, you know, uh, around people, um, the higher risk for um, for catching the 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 virus. So. Um, it, it really is mitigating your risk for infection um, by not having to go into the um, center because, like like um, he mentioned, you can't control other people um, or what they do or where they go and how careful they are. Um, do they believe in the science of masks, et cetera? So, um uh, it's just better that you um, are able to remove yourself fr from that. And it's like, oh, I don't have to deal with that. I'm so grateful that I don't have to deal with that. So, uh, so Renita, what advice would you give a patient who is on this call right now uh, considering a home treatment? Um, I would definitely um, – the, the advice that I would give would be to do your research um, and look at the modalities and rate, weigh the pros and cons of each and how it fits into your lifestyle. Instead of, you know, trying to, you know, I had to go in center. When I went in center, I had to try to make sure I had a a, a later time, a later shift, so I could work all day and I'd have to leave at four and go in the center, stay all evening, and, you know, it was, but now it's, I can do the activities that I like to do after work. Sometimes if I had um, uh, meetings or community service things and I'm, that I missed before, um, I could now do. So um, it's just all about research, what's best um, for you in your situation and your family situation. Take into consideration your family unit as well. Thank you. Uh, same question for you, Raymond. Uh, what advice would you give a patient uh, who is considering a home treatment? Well, the advice that I would give a patient who's considering it is to think about what life was like before you were on dialysis. Think about um, the things that you have given up because of dialysis and the scheduling that you have to go through. Think about that energy that you used to have. And you, you look at that 
and it should even encourage them even more so to consider or even actually follow through and do uh, dialysis from home, be it peritoneal or home hemodialysis. It, and once you're on it, stay disciplined. Do your treatment in its entirety. Don't take any shortcuts. The only way you're going to get and feel the benefits of the treatment is to follow through and do it in its, in its entirety. Like I said, the blood work doesn't lie because the blood work will tell them how you're doing and what you're doing if you're cutting it short. Um, End-stage uh, end renal disease is a long fight. And going home may seem scary, especially from what you see in center, but you'll be trained to the maximum amount to react to any situation. But that's what I, that's the advice that I would give them. Well, we'd like to thank Raymond and Renita for sharing their experiences. We appreciate all that information that you, uh, that you provided. We now want to hear your questions. If you haven't already done so, submit any questions you might have for our panelists using the chat feature or the Q&A through WebEx. Uh, we did get a couple of questions in earlier, uh, and so I'm going to uh, throw those out to our panelists. Um, and the first one, uh, I, I believe, is for either Raymond or Renita or both. Uh, ha have you experienced feelings of isolation during this time? You can go ahead, Renita. You can answer that first. Uh, okay. Um, I, yes. So, um, I mean, although I, I – you know, my spouse is here with me all the time now. It's still, um, there was still some isolation issues. I mean, because I, I work from home, luckily, and have been for the last seven years. But, and so that hadn't really bothered me until you tell me I can't leave. Then I want to leave, and then I have an issue. <laughs> um, so I'm... I, I do think yes. I've had I've had anxiety. I will admit that, um, and I have had um, some feelings of kind of low points of kind of like oh gosh, where is this going? In the last two weeks, I've had five friends tell me they have COVID, um, and these are healthy individuals that have been knocked down by it, and so that scared the the Jesus out of me. So, you know, you get those anxiety moments as well as the isolation, but I, then I think this is much better for me. You know, I'm in a much better situation. And Raymond? Yes, yes and I, I would have to agree with her wholeheartedly. Um, at the beginning, it was tough. It was tough, especially like when I said uh, I was being fearful instead of careful. Um, I love my family. I love being with them and around them. But all day long, it was starting to get to me. So I would take a little break, go for a drive, you know, just by myself. Um, and it, it helped me. And, and also my faith helped me to get through a lot of it because the power, I never underestimate the power of prayer. So I just prayed on it and prayed for the strength because these kids were driving me crazy at first. But now that I can get out, it's much better. Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, we have a question for Kim. Um, and the person said, I've been thinking about home dialysis but have been hesitant to leave my dialysis center. Did you have any patients who were like me? Did they decide to go home, go to home dialysis? Uh, absolutely. I think that um, when you're in the dialysis center, there's a false um, safety mechanism that's kind of reinforced where your confidence level may not be high enough to think that you can actually do it. And I think that 
when you're with the right uh, training nurse and, you know, um, explore your options that many people can do home dialysis that they never even thought can do home dialysis. So, you know, I think that muster up the courage and, and go for your education and give it a try. You know, if you give it a try and it's not for you, then, you know, so be it. But at least, you know, you gave it an effort and, um, you know, your life would be so much better, just like uh, Raymond and Renita's. Yeah. So uh, another question that we received uh, for both uh, Raymond and Renita, um, how much does your care partner assist you during your treatment? Well, I do home hemodialysis. So during my treatment, um, she just makes sure I'm I'm stable, that my blood pressures are good. Um, but I pretty much take care of the machine myself. But during treatment, she's just monitoring me. Um, she, she can sit there and do her work from home. And actually, the only time we talk to each other is, you know, if I need the remote to the TV or anything, or we want to talk something over about the kids or what's going on. But uh, I'm pretty much self-sufficient while I'm uh, on the machine. Um, And I am as well um, for um, peritoneal because I don't – deal with any bodily fluids um so um so i pretty much set the machine up um i set it up myself like i said my my husband does help me with the supplies though um and uh, sometimes it, it, you know um and um you know i can you know hook up to my catheter myself and just turn the machine on the it's already programmed and it just runs. Um, it'll beep if I lay on the. I sleep all night. It'll beep if I lay on the on the uh, tubing wrong and I hit the button, keep it going. And um, but I really don't need any assistance. It's just it. You know, it's pretty easy. Okay. So uh, this next question, I believe, it's for Kim. Um, you know, we heard uh, Renita and Raymond talk earlier about, you know, one of the benefits of going home is the diet is less restricted. Uh, can you explain why there are less diet restrictions with with the home therapy? Sure. So um, the goal with um, home therapy is to bring you back to somewhat normal. So um, the frequency of the treatment is important. Uh, Renita does her treatment uh, seven days a week, most likely. And um, the idea, even with home hemodialysis, is, you know, slower, longer treatments to um, give you flexibility in your diet, also to off a majority of your medication. So um, when you pursue home dialysis, you know, we'll discuss that, but it's definitely the frequency more than three times a week will give you more flexibility. Thank you, Kim. Um, another question for you. Uh, did you have any patients that started uh, a home therapy uh, in the last 10 months but decided to go back in center? Um, we, You know what? We've had very few. Um, Typically, you know, it's through the coaching process. I mean, if it was an absolute uh, no, I think that um, in the last 10 months, I've only had one patient that decided that that home was not for them. Um, And for Renita and Raymond, uh, this person said, I have a fear of having an an emergency at, at home. How did you overcome that fear? Um, for me, I just or thought about the. I'm sorry. Or, or did you overcome that fear? Yes, it... um, I overcame the fear. Uh, for me, it was it was about how I was going to function uh, 
as a father to my children, especially after growing up a fatherless child. To me, while I was in center, I was neglecting my kids because when I came home, I was so wiped out, I couldn't do anything with them until the next day. So I didn't, I didn't look at that as a positive. And yeah, I was afraid to come home. And I can even tell you that my wife and I discussed a couple of days ago uh, our first day at home and how scary it was. Um, but you're trained so well before you go home that even the smallest of mistakes you can react to quickly, plus the machine I work on, which is the next stage machine, um, they back up their products because they have 24 hours, 35, uh, 365 days a year service or customer service where you can always get in touch with someone. Now, when you're talking like medical emergencies, like when you're in centers, um, that could be scary, but we haven't run into that, you know. I mean, it's been going so well, and every patient is different. But you'll be trained well, and your care partner will be trained so well that the reaction to those situations are the same as you would get inside of a unit. Um, you can go I ahead with me. really, okay, so, um, I was thinking in terms of, you know, like, either medical emergency or home emergency, like something in the home. Um, I I didn't really think about it, I guess. Well, I mean, in terms of medical emergency, um, I, I hadn't really thought other than if something were to happen to me physically, what, what would I do? What would my husband know to do? And, you know, I, you know, I tell him just if something happens, you know, just unhook me, sanitize, unhook me and switch the machine off and do what you need to do. Call the ambulance or take me or whatever we need to do. So we just kind of, I mean, think about those types of things, but, um, um, I hadn't really had a, a real fear of of that. Okay. Um, uh, another question we got in, who provided you education on uh, your home option? Okay, uh, at first, when I was in the hospital, when I first found out that my kidneys had failed, um, there was a nurse educator that came to the hospital, and she told me about the different modalities. Now, back in 1998, uh, they weren't pushing the home hemodialysis that much. So she didn't tell me anything about that. She just told me about in-center and peritoneal dialysis. So I thought that were that was my two options. But later on, in these, the many years my wife and I have gone through these things, um, we found out about home hemodialysis. And it, was, it wasn't it was something we could even prescribe to because my wife couldn't take that much time off until one time I was in the hospital and a doctor told me, Mr. Scott, um, we need to get you with an ed- educator because I think home hemo would be good for you. And I told her, I don't think I, my wife could take that much time off. And then we found out that she didn't have to be there every day, that I, of course, had to, but she could just come on the emergency response day, which was like once a week, once or twice a week she would come and we would go over emergency responses. But um, once that, that was clarified, then I was all, I was all in anything but in center. Go ahead, Renia. Okay. And um, when I was diagnosed, my nephrologist's office had a class, um, and they sent me to a class that talked about dialysis. And and luckily, I didn't crash into dialysis um, like uh, it sounds like Raymond did, perhaps. And uh, um, so I had time 
to um, consider uh, my options before I actually started dialysis. So I heard about all the modalities. Um, home hemo was not an option for me because at that time it was mandatory that you needed a, a care partner. And my husband, um, you know, the way he worked, um, I – I could not, you know, we could I could not depend on him to be there and things of that nature. So that was a so that's why I uh, I looked at a PD as the the better option for me. But um like I said my nephrologist actually had a class and and I I went to the class. So Hello. Oh. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, I muted myself. Uh, <laughs> like Jerome. <laughs> <laughs> Bueller. Uh, Be- Bueller. 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 <laughs> so, and Kimberly, if there is a patient uh, that is listening uh, to today's conversation and they are interested in a home therapy, who should they talk to? Um, they should actually talk about it with everyone, <laughs> their physician, their social worker. They should find out who the resource is in the clinic. Um, majority of dialysis providers have educators that work with patients. They should find out the number, phone number for the home training clinic that's associated with their provider. You know, everyone is what I would say. Okay. Uh, and Kimberly, can you uh, possibly talk about uh, what Rogerson is doing to educate uh, its patients about the COVID-19 vaccine? Um, sure. So um, we're actually hosting a webinar tomorrow <laughs> on the vaccine. Um, we have actually been um, asking patients if they would be accepting of the vaccine. Um, so this, with this, you know, webinar is interesting to hear some perspectives on, you know, just um, what people's thoughts were. Where some folks are saying that I'll wait until the the first wave goes through to see what it is, but um, the FDA has been reinforcing that the vaccine is very safe, although it has not been studied in dialysis patients. So, um, you know, but at, at this point, protection is protection. And, um, you know, at least the vaccine is being available. I know that uh, on a national level, we are trying to um, get dialysis patients higher up on the level of vaccination. So, you know, in the priority list. So there's several different objectives that I'm working on on a daily basis (laughs) to bring patients the vaccine uh, sooner. Okay. And uh, our, our, I believe our last question of the day, uh, Kim, Kimberly, can you um, share, uh, get, provide any advice on, on uh, to patients who are considering uh, a home therapy? Uh, what advice would you, you give them at this time? Yeah, so, I mean, at this time, I would really sit down and, and – Find out who your resource is to give you even the virtual education because, you know, I found that the education being done in the center is somewhat distracting. And when we've done the education with people via, like, telehealth or things like that, they have more of an opportunity to talk about their own personal needs. And it's very important, like, Renita went through it, Raymond went through it, you know, different um, things that are important to them that you may not want to share in a public forum with, you know, 16 other people listening to you (laughs) at the same time. So, you know, we're constantly offering information sessions to people. Um, The best option is to just get connected with a person in your center who can get you that education. 
and really have an open and honest conversation with them so they can share the health benefits to doing home hemodialysis, which are tremendously, you know, beneficial above in-center dialysis, and then figure out your own plan, really, is to move along in your own individual way and get through what you need to get through in order to live your best life. Kimberly, Raymond, Renita, thank you all for being with us this afternoon. We really appreciate the uh, amazing feedback that you provided today. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Jerome. And, uh, and, you know, you can ask patients randomly if they've ever even heard of ESRD, NCC, and the answer would be no. But once you get involved in this thing, you guys – are doing things that even patients don't don't even realize. So I do appreciate it. And I also wanted to send a shout out to Kimberly and the Rogerson Institute because uh, my wife and I drove an RV. She drove actually downtown New York, and I did one of my treatments at the Rogerson Institute. Yes, and, you did. <laughs> and I never been to a dialysis clinic where the patients are actually smiling and looking forward to go, going to dialysis. Never until I went there. Impeccable service, professional people, they're worth it if you're in New York. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, Ravi, for that feedback. Very much appreciate it. And thanks for so, having for me as well. You know I enjoy sharing um, any information I have with potential um, home patients, um, it's my passion, so anytime uh, I can help. Thank you, Renita. Uh, we, we know that we can always count on you, so thank you very much for being with us. Okay. So for additional COVID-19 resources, visit the ESRD NCC website resources page. Uh, the web page has lots of great information from where to find credible online information to ways to empower yourself to learning how to connect virtually with others. The COVID-19 Patient Resources webpage offers a variety of information. You can access handouts, webinars, videos, and links to trustworthy organizations. Check back often because new resources are added often. Next slide. We also want to tell you about the Kidney Patient Care, Your Guide to Using Telemedicine. The toolkit was created to support the patient transition to telemedicine during the COVID-19 pandemic. It includes information about the benefits of using telemedicine, how patients can start using it, and the equipment needed to get started. The guide even shows patient how, patients how they can track their health care appointments. Next slide. So for our final resource, we want to remind everyone about the kidneyhub.org. It's a mobile-friendly web app developed by the NCC with lots of input from our patient subject matter experts. It has information on home dialysis, the kidney transplant process, infection prevention, mental health, and more. Uh, you can save it to your home screen of your iPhone, and it makes it very easy to access useful information. I suggest you check it out today. Next, uh, as a reminder, our patient COVID-19 webinar events are every other week. Uh, so our next patient event, uh, this is due to the holidays. Um, it's going to be a little longer in between. Uh, Tuesday, January 5th at 4 p.m. is our patient event, but we do have a COVID-19 call uh, for the professionals. Uh, on Wednesday, December 30th at 3 p.m. Thank you all again for being with us this afternoon. For additional COVID-19 resources, visit, case, visit the CASER website at casercoalition.com. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. <laughs>